Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hoya Locker Room, episode 83. We have a esteemed guest who's a repeat um, member. Uh, we'd like to welcome Robert Churchwell into the building. Um, thank you, Mr. Churchwell, for being here. Today's episode, uh, we're going to discuss Georgetown men's basketball alumni. Um, some of their efforts, some of their challenges, um, their goals, some things they're trying to put forward. Um, and we're, we're very, very excited about today's show, as I say this every, every, um, every episode. Um, and given the challenging times that we're in right now, um, I think it's even more important um, as an alumni group, um, we come together um, and, and support the program. So with that, um, I welcome in uh, my esteemed uh, co-host, uh, Mr. Markham Stansbury Jr. I, I just have one question, and that is, why did you refer to him as Mr. Churchwell? This dude is named Rob Robbo. Robbo. Robbo, Robbo <laughs> from the streets. <laughs> hey, where the hell that come from? <laughs> uh, Rob from Gonzaga, but I've never heard of Mr. Churchwell, but okay, well, we'll, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. I appreciate that, Mr. Smith. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, before, before we jump in, did anyone, I, I want to give uh, the, the, the crew uh, a shout out. And we normally don't, you know, we don't really talk about what's going on on the court um, because that's not what Hoya Locker Room is you know, meant to be about. Um, um, but yesterday's effort for me, um, again, going against the number eight team in the country, given everything that uh, is taking place, um, I, I felt I felt we showed up and showed up in a big way. So I just want to give the, the fellas a shout out. And obviously Primo um, was a standout. Um, Primo is firmly in the record books now. Um, top three, um, most shots attempted. He was 15 for 31. Um, so those 31 attempts. I don't think I took 31 attempts in four years. <laughs> and, and then in terms and of the stats, uh, and the stats will show that that was an excellent business decision. <laughs> and, and Y'all won of, a lot of games because you didn't take shots. <laughs> and, and, and in terms of points scored, um, he's on the top 25 list uh, with the 37 points. So I just want to give give those guys a shout out because that, that's not something we normally do. And then I want to give Andrew Ciandela a shout out for the, the, the soccer scarf and Mark, I have yours nice. over here as well. This is very nice. Andrew is in charge of tickets um, at Georgetown and also shout out to Mark Guerrero for facilitating. So I'm, I'm a scarf guy. Uh, it's a little chilly here in LA. So uh, yeah. And, and Churchwell already, already gave it the, Gave it the, the thumbs up. So oh yeah, no okay. doubt. I, I will be calling Mark right after this so I can uh get get so fit let's for just, one. Let's just uh be clear about something. I don't I don't Mr. Smith, since it, this is how we're going today. Since so we're being uh, formal is uh when he says it's chilly in LA, what he means is it's 50 55, degree. 55 degrees. Um, so Y'all folks on the East Coast not really going to sympathize with us too much. Well, yeah. what, wasn't asking for any sympathy. Um, <laughs> uh, again, I'm, I'm just a little under the weather, so uh, you know, <laughs> I'm just trying to get better. But yeah, you're 100% right, Mark. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, what is uh, Georgetown men's basketball alumni? Oh, man. <clears throat> Great question. It's um, something that is dear to both of you guys, uh, as well as myself. Um, for those who don't know, Markham has been, uh, and Gene have both been attempting to bring the Georgetown brothers together for several years. And uh, unfortunately, um, you know, some have showed up, some haven't. Um, over the years, it just seems like, you know, we're like this instead of like this, right? And so in, in an attempt uh, for us to really get like this, um, 
I felt like it was a, a purpose of mine to really jump on board with what Gene had set in motion and what Markham had picked up and to really jump on top of that and give all my efforts. Uh, GMBA is the Georgetown men's basketball alumni group. And uh, we came up with GMBA, you know, G, Georgetown, NBA, you know, that's just that, that, that brainiac thing coming, coming, coming there. So um, it all, it all, I think, mixed and meshed really, really well. Uh, <clears throat> over the last, was it Mark, about two years now? Yeah, a little over Maybe two. two. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let um, me just let me just interrupt for a second. Uh, mm -hmm. He will be I, doing I that all day, just for the record. Just, uh, just uh, it, it, not for a second. <laughs> I, I think it needs to really be said. Like GMBA is really uh, like there's similarities in, into the way Holy Locker Room uh, kind of came about because. Uh, when, when I started reaching out to people uh, about coming together, um, like Gene would call me every week when he first started, like asking me what I thought, uh, you know, any suggestions, any comments. And finally, I was like, yo, like, you calling me every week. Like, why don't I just, like, be the producer, like, and, or, and, I, and I just stepped in. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't ask me to do that. I kind of threw it out to him. And uh, with the men's basketball alumni group, uh, church called me and was like, hey, man, like, whatever, you, well, however I can help, I want to do it. And uh, that it has been invalid. Uh, and I just, just want to be clear about that. So I, I appreciate that, man. I think I was, I was mostly moved by the call that we had uh, after the news of uh, David David Edwards passing, mm. uh, when you know at the at the at the start, the height of COVID, yeah, yeah. and um, I think we had ninety plus on the call, just 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 to check in, right? And right. Dave was on, Dave was only with us for a year, but clearly impacted the program impacted all of us and the fact that we were all on there just <clears throat> um reinforced you know that there, there there's still something there right there's still a brotherhood right and um and I, and I think it was after that mark that i that i reached out to you it was like you know yeah what what can i do like how can i help really fortify this this movement right not just a moment but a movement and to 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 really really see it through so, so, so um, um, go ahead, Gene. Um, I, I spoke to it earlier um, because we all know what currently is going on now, what we're in the midst of. And, you know, for, for someone like myself, um, I, I see opportunity in everything. I see value in everything. Mm. Um, and, you know, what the program has gone through, what the program represents, um, you know, we we have been the new kids on the block. We have been the you know the the Dark Vader crew. Um, um, so for us to be experiencing this and not show up to me would be not what the program was built on, not the foundation. Um, so when I found out both you and Markham were in the midst of galvanizing. You know, men's basketball alumni um, is something I would just naturally organically want to be a part of. With that being said, um, what has been some of your biggest challenges in taking this on? Because as, as natural and as simple as it seems, um, clearly it's not, a, not an easy proposition. You know, one could easily say time and distance. You know, we're all spread out. You know, you guys are on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast. Um, time, time and distance. But, um, you know, you've had several former players on, on here and um, several have spoken about some form of PTSD, right, from going through the program. And, um, you know, and I, and I, and I, I believe we, we've all suffered 
some portion of PTSD. Um, <laughs> and you know, it just, it just, it just is what it is, right? Um, I remember Coach saying on more than one occasion, right? Um, you know, y'all motherfuckers may not like me, but you gotta come together for each other to win, right? And, you know, you weren't really thinking about it in that moment, because in that moment, you was like, I can't stand this dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every little step I take, he cuts me out, you know? And as I got older, you know, sophomore, junior, senior, I, I began to understand more of what coaches' lessons were, right? <clears throat> Not to say that I agree with all of them, but, you know, I learned tremendously from a lot of them. But with that being said, you know, kind of taking on his model, right? Let's, at this point, let's take Coach Thompson out of the equation and let's come together for us, right? Exactly. And so the, well, that's one of the biggest obstacles now, Gene, is having people take their experiences with Coach or with the program that, I mean, let's just be honest with, he's still has an influence over, um, kind of removing him from it right? Removing him in, in the sense of, you know, like that was 30, 40 years ago, right? We're here, we're grown men, families, whatever, right? Yeah, let's remember the hard work, the wins, you know, uh, the championships, you know, whatever, but let's take the bad parts, let's remove that and let's come together for each other. And the main, the main purpose, one of the four main purposes of GMBA is for us to come together to lift each other up and to, to 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 network with each other. And overcoming that PTSD has been probably the hardest part. Yeah, that definitely. I, I I would echo that because you couldn't have told me in a million years that after Big John passed, like people wouldn't be like it's all over it, but it's it, it's been heavy lifting and slow. Uh, but over over time, people have have begun to come around. Uh, would, would you agree with that, Church? Yes, definitely, definitely. I mean, we've over the last two years, we've seen progress in what we're doing. Um, you know, <clears throat> we've seen more and more guys come out and. You know, we're not of the illusion that we'll have 20, 30, 50 former players and managers at everything we do because we got time and distance, right? But just being able to have double digit guys now at, at pretty much every event we've had, we've had at least 12 or more. Um, I think the most we has been 20. Um, and that's, I mean, that's, that's progress. That's real progress. And people are coming out. People are starting to, to to take notice. And you know, we are, you know, one 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 of the one of the other main missions that we have is is to support the basketball program. Is to support Pat. You know, is to support the boys who who are who are there now. So you know, um, I think now it's about every home game. You know, I'm there. Uh, Chico, uh, Irvin Church. Uh, I see Eric Smith. Bebe, Lonnie, um, you know, a lot of us are there, you know, to support, you know, to give Pat, you know, our support and prayers and the boys are our support and prayers. So, um, you know, that can still be a part of, that is always going to be a part of who we are. Um, but, you know, again, you know, we just, I just want people to know that GMBA is for us, it's for us, it's for us, it's about us, it's for us. And I'm going to I'm going to try to put, the referee on the sidelines in terms of the questions. <laughs> so I, I am, I, you know, because you both are, are part of the leadership group. So I think I, <laughs> that's a tech. <laughs> that's a tech on top out. Um, that's a tech. That's a tech. That's a tech. Um, but, but I think it's in, important um, for people to understand what you just said. This is, this is about us. Um, and, you know, part of Hoya Locker Room's mantra is a, is a Frederick Douglass quote. And, you know, Markham is the, the quote expert. Um, 
It's just one of those things. We only want the past to be um, discussed or talked about as it relates to the future. So we're not trying to live in the past and talk about you know, our accomplishments, even though that will naturally come up just because the jokes are, you, you, can't, you can't get away from the jokes. Um, but for me, it's the opportunity or the ability for the current players to hear us speak about the program, you know, to hear us speak about our experiences, whatever they may be, um, so they can understand what they're a part of. Um, because, you know, that, that's one thing, good, bad, or indifferent, um, the program always did for me, um, was to let you know those who came before you, and we all know, more importantly, he let you know that there was an, another cat coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you didn't take care of business, he would, he would talk to whomever assistant coach, don't worry about him. We got somebody coming in to replace him. Um, so I, I, again, I, 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 want, I want to emphasize that because um, there was an article that came out today, which again, at this point in time, is all regurgitation, right? There's, there's nothing else that can, can really be said. Um, but th this sadness and this despair, I mean, obviously we get it, you know, win winning takes care of everything. Mm -hmm. right? Um, but you know, I, I, you know, I, you know, I haven't shaved or I haven't, you know, had haircut, uh, since the new year, because until we win a game, that's, 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 that's what I'm doing over here. I wear this scarf at, 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 when I'm watching every game, that's what we're doing over here. Um, but I, 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 I want you both to speak to how important it is to um, be present, be, um, be vocal, um, to talk about what the, 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 the history and the tradition of the program is all about. And again, I, I talked about the challenges. Is the university, uh, are you having conversation with the university? Um, is the program, have you had conversation with the program? What's going on with that dialogue? Well, I, I would, I, w I would say we, we're working on developing a relationship with, uh, with the athletic department. Uh, Lee Reed has been very supportive uh, of, of our efforts, and I we really thank him for that. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it, that has presented challenges because I, I, I historically. Uh, we as players and managers, uh, former coaches, we, we've never been together, right? And I, I think when when it started off, people were probably looking like looking like we're looking at us with a side eye, like what, what, what's this all about? Like, like you're almost like you're not supposed to be there uh, because. I, I I don't know if church would agree with this, but like I, I I feel like there was a certain aspect element of like you know we didn't get the permission slip signed, so you can't do this. And I'm I just how I operate in life. I'm not really a guy who ever looks to to get a permission slip. Uh, that's just how I roll. So uh, here we are. Um, but I, I think strengthening those lines of communication uh, is, is, is something that should be done and we're going to continue to be done. Yeah, I, I'd uh, second what, what Markham said about this, the standoffish, like, whoa, wait a minute, we don't really do that here type of thing, right? You know, we see each other from time to time here and there, but, you know, in mass and unison all together, like, yeah, that ain't, that ain't really what we do when, you know, we feel like it should be just, just the reverse um, because we do have something in common and we do have something in common that has a very rich tradition before, during, and now after us, right? And so, and um, I think it is very important that we continue to build those relationships. Like Markham said, we are, you know, working with the, uh, building those relationships with the athletic department. Um, Lee Reed, like he said, has been very, very supportive. 
um, the Hoya Hoop Club. Uh, Mark Guerrero uh, has been very, very supportive. Uh, I've, you know, worked very closely with, with, with Mark and, um, you know, even other branches of Georgetown. Uh, so Hoyas, you know, uh, Winoka Wendy Wilkes, uh, you know, some stuff that we did with So Hoyas. So, um, you know, not only are we attempting to connect with each other in the basketball realm, but also take those connections and reach out throughout the university. You know, one, one of my classmates is the head football coach, you know, Rob. And, you know, uh, I've talked about coming into, well, he's talked about me coming in and speaking to the football team sometimes. Um, you know, just, just really trying to let people know that, you know, men's basketball is more than just men's basketball. You know, men's basketball alone is about more than just, you know, men's basketball. Um, and I, I think that that was a big part that I – didn't realize while I was in it, but you know, you go back to a reunion or whatever, and you hear about stuff that happened, and I'm just like, wait a minute, I know I was here when that was going on. And everybody just starts laughing. They're like, that church only worried about you. You were in the gym, right? Yeah. And uh, and so it sometimes it feels like there's such a, a a huge part of our college experience that was missed out on. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't regret it. You know, I mean, I, you know, I. Love playing basketball. Love playing basketball at Georgetown. So I, I don't regret it. But it feels like now is an opportunity to get some of that back. Yeah, and, and what I what I would add to that uh, is that what Church is saying is extremely important because uh, the, the, the party was talking about in terms of reaching out to uh, other in, engaging with other factions in, in the university community because when we were there. Uh, we were really uh, like in a bubble and and engaging with alumni uh, was something that not only wasn't encouraged, uh, it was discouraged. Like, come to the gym, keep your head down, don't engage with any alumni, which when you go to an institution like Georgetown, uh, to not do that, I think is just very stupid. I mean, I, I was an English major and Shakespeare and the classics and all that. I mean, that, that's that's the same whether you're at Georgetown or Podunk U and Mississippi or wherever. It's, 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 it's literally the same book. So, why am I going to Georgetown and not engaging in that uh, alumni community? Like it, that's just it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So that's 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 a, a huge huge part of, of what we want to do. What I will add add to this is since doing Hoya locker room and um, you know being exposed to both of you gentlemen's classes. Um, your, your classes, your graduating classes represent some of the most powerful stories and experiences that have come out of Georgetown and that have manifested even to today. Um, that's been so exciting for me. Um, the ability and the opportunity to not only have the relationships that I have with both you gentlemen, but you know, someone like Chris Rock that now has dog talk, which again, these are all extensions of what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a point of view and a narrative that has never been shared. Um, so just from that vantage point, I, I think it's exciting. Um, and then, you know, bringing in a, a, one, a one and done guy like Trey Dickerson, who played for Patrick. Again, this is just part of the outreach. This is part of our stories that we want to share to you know, for your nation. And I think that's important. Um, um, what you guys are trying to do, or what you guys are going to do, again, is, 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 a, is a lifetime thing. It's a legacy, history, pride thing, which is, I hop on that all the time. And, and I just celebrate you for your efforts. Um, and I know just from, you know, obviously coming through the program, um, uh, it's not gonna be easy. 
but by the same token, you know, nothing has been easy about, you know, playing at Georgetown and being a part of Georgetown. So yeah. I, I think that goes without saying. Um, so again, I uh, I just want to applaud you both for for um, embarking upon this. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. What, what what are the top goals that you hope to accomplish short term? Um, and then if you can hit me with long term as well. Um, and I, I'm sure we've gone over it in some facet, but if, if there's something you want to, in terms of what you've already done to this point, um, and then what what's on the horizon? I know we have uh, several several goals. Uh, I appreciate that question. <clears throat> um, first and foremost, man, we want to go ahead and get our five hundred one c three status solidified. Uh, hopefully, that'll be here. Uh, we'll be able to finish that in the next month or so. We're just waiting for the paperwork to come back. Um, the reason for that, you know, is we feel we feel like in a broader community that'll give us more um, credibility. Um, that it give us the opportunity to, you know, maybe be able to raise some funds for cert certain events. Um, also give us the opportunity to uh, establish ourselves a little more in, in the DC area. That's, that's also one of our missions is to, is to um, work with uh, DC organizations to work with youth, uh, specifically, you know, youth and, and underserved black and, and, and brown communities, man, and, uh, you know, help combat some of those um, educational gaps. Um, so, you know, that's one of the first and foremost uh, goals. Uh, you know, we also want to hopefully increase our, uh, our attendance, our, our membership, you know, um, we, we are growing, uh, you know, every time we get one, I'm, I'm very happy about that. Uh, there's several here in the DC area who I do speak to uh, who I think maybe are close to showing up more. Uh, so, you know, I just uh, market my, we talk about it all the time. So, you know, we're going to continue. Shout out just, to Reggie Williams. Oh, man, big listening. time, big time. <laughs> when I tell you, I was so happy to see him, man. Like that was, y'all just don't know. Like next to Pat, Reggie was like, he was, he was God for me, man. So just to see him there. You know, and just to be able to have that one on one time with him for a few minutes was just awesome. I, I just want to give you a shout out. I saw Fred Brown in some photos. Yeah. Um, yeah. I saw Bobby Winston. In some oh, photos. yeah. And, you know, people, and I, I mentioned those two specifically because Bobby reminded me of Fred. Um, he was a big point guard. Yeah. Um, you know, like you, you weren't ripping him. Um, he was just a, a rock, like you could always- Strong, be, strong, like country strong. <laughs> um, but, but, but the fact that, you know, you are getting guys to show up that, again, are far removed. Um, and, you know, which leads me into, and I don't mean you guys to cut you guys off, but feel free to go back. But, you know, Church World, your career was a model of consistency. Um, 128 games played, 128 games started. Um, thousand point score, 600 rebounds. Should have took more shots. Um, I mean, because your your your, th your three point percentage was like in the 40s or something. Um, but you only average one three a game. We do our homework at Hoy Locker Room. <laughs> um, what I what I what it's going to take that effort that level of effort for for the NBA. Um, and how do you see that playing out in terms of, um, again, events, in terms of outreach? And add to that, how do you engage Hoya Nation? And or when do you plan, plan to engage Hoya Nation? Um, because obviously, we want to be a vehicle. We want to help in any way that we can. But what's your outreach going to be like? Mm. Good, 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 good questions, man. I, I appreciate that. You know, I, I certainly agree with you. I probably could have took about five to eight more shots a game. Definitely. Uh, you know, but you know, we had a, we had a couple of big boys down in there oh. that was, you know, clogging you up the lane. You were between so, you know. Alonzo and Othello. <laughs> hey, look, man, someone sent me a picture of our starting five my freshman year. 
And uh, the front line, obviously, was the Kimbe, Zoe, and me, right? So I I texted him that picture, and I said, you know what, man? I'm, I'm okay with sacrificing my career for y'all, you know? And I'm, I'm really glad y'all made the most of that, you know? And they just touched <laughs> back laughing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, you know, <clears throat> the... Uh, the our volume two year end review went out this morning. Um, and uh, I know it's early there, so when you guys get off, check your email. Um, but it not only went out to members of the GMBA, um, I added a couple other people. I added the Who Club, I added So Hoyas, I added um, a young lady from the advancement department who I had a very good conversation with at one of the Who Club events. Um, and she was very appreciative because she was like, man, knowing that information, knowing how you guys are, you know, coming together to pull people together to network and to lift each other up, that helps me raise money. And she was very appreciative of that. And, um, and so, you know, the outreach has begun. It has begun. When we get that nonprofit status, I think, you know, the executive committee will come together um, you know, put formulate some ideas, obviously send it out to the group and together we can figure out, okay, how do we really like mass introduce who we are, what we're about, you know, right now is in some circles where we are getting some buzz because we are seeing some wins, you know, at, with the, uh, when the executive committee meets, one of the thing that, uh, David, David Green always talks about, <clears throat> David was a class of 85, Markham. Yeah. Yep, class 85 manager. Um, and he always talks about this. Uh, manager, manager 84. extraordinaire. <laughs> 85 or 84? 85. 85. Okay. 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 Yes, manager extraordinaire, uh, law professor, and new, numerous other accolades. Uh, but he always talks about small wins. Let's get small wins. And we've been getting small wins, which have started to grow into bigger wins. And people are taking notice that we are doing what we're doing, uh, Gene. So I think that mass outreach, that mass rollout will be coming soon. Yes, Markham, I did. I also sent it there. Cool. Yes, indeed. Um, um, <clears throat> also, one other thing I would add that Dave also always says is that we're, we're going to support the program, uh, period. Like, yeah, you know, no, no matter who's leading the program, we're here to support the program. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's uh, very important uh, that that we all understand that. Uh, I am I am so glad that you brought that up, Martin, because that was one of the things. I think that was probably one of the contentious points, uh, one of the contentious starting points of the group was. Knowing, knowing our lane, right? right? What is our lane? You know, are we trying to recruit? Are we trying to hire coaches? Are we, no, 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 no. What Markham just said, we're here to support the program, right? Who's in that chair right now? Happens to be a, a young fella named Patrick Ewan, who, you know, I grew up watching every, everywhere I wanted to be was, tw was uh, uh, 33, um, you know, Great, great, great person. Uh, really, really good person. Um, and right now, that's that's who's leading this program, and that's who we are supporting um, with everything that we have. You know, uh, who knows if Pat's there for another ten years, we'll support him for another ten years. If if this is it, just like Markham said, who else comes in? We're going to support them because they're part of Georgetown, and that's what we had to make sure the group understood. Right? We are supporting the program. I, I might have touched on this earlier, but if so, I apologize, um, but I, I'm going back. Um, but I, 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 I like the tone uh, of this episode. Um, and what, what I guess what I want to touch on is there are probably people in the Hoya Nation that may see this and go, well, you guys do understand we're O and 28. Right, you do understand we haven't won a game in 690 days or whatever, whatever it is. Um, is this the opportune time to be doing this? Like, are you guys not, not you know, 
living in today's world. Speak to that. Speak to to Hoya Nation and 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 touch on why why now has really nothing to do with it. Um, um, because as you both touched on, this is this is our program. Mm -hmm. So if you could speak to that, like the current state of affairs. Yeah, I mean, I would say I would say to those people, um, you know, those young men get up every morning, they go to class, they go into practice. And, you know, I believe I haven't been to every practice. I've been to a couple, but I believe today they bust their ass and they work hard. Um, you know, uh, it, the, the results certainly are what they want. You know, we're all out here talking about, you know, oh, they're doing this, but the results certainly aren't what they want, right? So um, I would say that those young men, those coaches, you know, everyone in the program is is working hard to do their best to get wins. And, you know, to me, it's, you know, it's, you know, wins or losses, they come and go, right? We went through a period my junior year where we lost five in a row. Um, and man, I mean, that was, that was tough, but, this is still our program. This is still Georgetown, right? Um, when we walk out the gym, we still got the G on our chest, right? Uh, when we walk up the hill, right, we still have to be uh, students. We still have to be young men. We still have to be alumni who support the program, who support the school, who support each other. Um, and so <clears throat> anytime, in my mind, in my estimation, is a good time to do that, to support. Georgetown to support one another, to support alumni, and to uh, bring people back into the fold. Anytime is a good time. With that Kodak. Uh, uh, and I, I also would add that, uh, and, and, and I, you were talk, talking, saying earlier, Jim, like you, you look at, like the, there's opportunities in everything. Um, so even though we're not winning, like, we were when you were there. Uh, we don't strike fear in the hearts of people uh, in, in the same way. Uh, there, there's opportunity, uh, you know, to, to to buy the stock low while you got a chance. Uh, so. I'll, I'll add to this: when we when we started Hoya Locker Room, uh, the original premise was impact we trust. The original premise was, how can I help, you know, someone that I, that made my career possible, right? Someone I balled in, someone I, I wanted to support, how can I help support the program? But actually it was more about one individual. And it took, it took uh, having a, a, a church roll on, it took Markham coming aboard, it took, um, you know, um, you know, just connecting with, other former players to 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 kind of it's it's not about who's coaching. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, obviously that's very personal to me because I played with the guy for three years. I was roommates for two years, so that that's personal. But it's so much bigger than that, and that's why I'm so excited about NBA. Um, and, and and again, um, for those that are watching that uh, probably don't see. This is an opportune time to, to to discuss it. I see I see no better time, mm -hmm. um, you know, because again, the more challenging uh, times, the more you want to show up. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really you know, I really thank you guys for showing up because again, what we're going through just just didn't start this season. Um, it's been challenging for a minute, and you know, I, I mean, we show up. Um, so I, again, I thank you guys. Well, well, Gene, you brought up Church's career, and uh, I'm sorry, Church. If it, this takes a turn for the bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't. I mean, Church, this is unscripted. Other than you know, we send out questions early, but this is really much unscripted. <laughs> well, no, I mean, because I, I I was there for one year of his career, made him some good Gatorade, got him off to a good start as a freshman. No doubt, uh, no doubt. but. We did a show where Bubakar Al and Johnny Jones were 22s. <clears> and Churchwell, I don't know if he sent you the same note. He sent me a note saying that 
he would not lower himself to being on a show with those two guys uh, <laughs> and refused to appear because he said he was, I mean, I, I, I think he played the most games in Hoya history and Johnny Jones played the least. So he said he would not go on the show with Johnny Jones. Uh, but I want to ask keep him, you. I'm keeping I'm keep my sound on you. <laughs> I, I want to ask you uh, the same questions we asked them, uh, which is, uh, what was your best game mm. and your worst game? Best practice. Well, no, let's let's let's. I want to overload. Give me your, right. give me your best game. <clears throat> first. Man, that's tough. That's tough. Um, well, first of all, uh, Johnny and Bubuka, don't y'all believe that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um man, there's there's probably a couple, man. I think. All right, so I got three that just um, junior year when we beat Syracuse at the Cap Center. Um, you know, that was, that was pretty special, especially since we had lost to them the year before in the, in the Big East tournament championship. Uh, and, uh, on the air ball three that I shot, although I could have sworn I got fouled on that thing because I couldn't follow through all the way. So that thing fell just a little bit short, but, uh, we beat Syracuse at the cap center my junior year. I think I had 24 that game or 22, something like that. And um, it was it was a uh, like a matchup, you know. Lawrence Lawrence Moulton, Sam, you know, played at Syracuse. Obviously, played at Carroll. I played at Gonzaga. So we would, you know, we battled for years, man. Um, mutual respect, you know. Sam was, you know, obviously one of the greatest uh, Big E scores ever. So, um, but that was a big one. Uh, freshman year, Duke at the Cap Center. Big East ACC Challenge. I mean, that was one of two games that I can remember where it was packed. I mean, it felt like a college atmosphere. Uh, generally, Capson, it was cold, it was dark, you know. Um, but that thing, it was rocking. I think it was, I think it was Big Monday. And man, <clears throat> and again, you know, Grant Hill. So, you know, being being on some all-star teams with Grant, all met team with Grant. Um and, you know, from, from obviously DMV area and a lot of people don't know that, you know, my, my, my top three schools were Georgetown, Duke and Notre Dame. So, you know, having that way in on that game and, you know, us winning, uh, I think I had maybe 10 points, like five rebounds. I had a really good game that game. Um, that was, that was, that was a big one. That was a big one. I think the last was probably freshman year, man. We were down in Florida. We played Houston. And um, my friend, I had 19 and 13 that game. And <laughs> it's a couple was things that, that I Tampa? Said. Yep, that was in Tampa. Remember that they opened that, that new Tampa Center market? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a couple things I remember about that game. Uh, the first one, I remember I was I was tired. And they were they were pressing me, so I ran by the bench, put my put my my fist up. So I needed a sub, and I was in the I was in the back of the press offense, <clears throat> and so they ended up throwing the ball up. I got it. I went up, boom, dunk it backwards. So as I'm getting back on on defense, I swear, coach met me at the bottom of the, of the bench and cussed my ass out all the way to the to, to the timeline. Like, oh, motherfucker, this ain't no circus. Pay the goddamn ball. <laughs> you don't need no sub. You ain't tired. Like, goddamn. You can't, uh, can't win. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. And I, but uh, probably about 10 years ago, man, I called down the basketball office and asked them just, just to send me some, some tape. You know, I want to see some tape, you know, whatever you have from 90 to 94. And they sent me that game. <clears throat> that was one of the games they sent. After the game, Commentators, you know, talking to the coach, and they brought brought me up because of the game I had. And first time, first and only time I've ever heard him say something like this. And he said, uh, he said, yeah, Robert, he has he has the potential to be the best at that position, in, you know, to, to ever play here. And um, when I heard that, man, that shit gave me chill bumps. And I and I I just imagine had I had I heard that 
one time, you know, while you were there, Instead in real time, motherfucker every day. Instead of mother, <laughs> if, I, if one of them motherfuckers would have turned into that, you know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, so those those are those are my three top. Games. What would be your I'm worst gonna, game? I'm, I'm sorry, Martin. Go ahead. What would be your worst game? Yeah. Oh, man. Maybe uh, what was that junior year UNLV when uh, Isaiah Ryder gave us forty on ABC? <laughs> <laughs> I think I caught like eighteen of them. <laughs> I, mean, I remember we walked into the locker room. <laughs> Coach said, "Y'all just put this motherfucker in the lottery." Um, <laughs> it might have been. I don't know, man. Honestly, I can't think of like really like a worse game you know um even you know i don't know i guess because i'm just i've always been that that team guy kind of like a, a gene smith who also wore 22 even when i was down you know it was at that point you know it wasn't even about me you know what i'm saying so i just i can't really see in a sense of a worse game i'm going I'm, i got two things for you church um one is um of the current roster, the current team, um, who's your favorite player, right? And in terms of what their contribution to the team has been thus far, uh, who reminds you of yourself in terms of that contribution? Man. Um, I, 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 I just, I, I don't know where that came from. Wow. <laughs> Unscri unscripted. Because, because right. you, you like, I, 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 I haven't missed a game all year other than those that haven't been televised or I can't find. Um, but that, you know, I, I see you there in every game and thank you for, for showing up, but. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, well, I've, I've yet to see anyone on this roster who could run the floor like me. And um, maybe it's because they don't want to, I don't know. Uh, I, would, I would love to see a little more effort from that. Um, but. I really like Riley, man. I, I I really like when he comes to the game, Joy, uh, um, Joy. the energy, the energy he brings, man. And uh you can you can really start to see his offensive game starting to come now. You know, he's starting to get more comfortable. And um, but I like how hard he plays on both ends. Um, I like his physicality, his athleticism. Um I would I would love to see him really, and I don't know, maybe it's just a different fast break that they run, you know, but I would love to see him get up and down that floor a little bit harder. Um, you know, as far I like uh, number 22, Izuero. Me too. <laughs> That's my guy, man. I would I wish I wish he could get some more minutes. So Every time he files out, I go, That's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what, man? He plays hard, man. He seems he seems to play with his heart. I just I, I I just hope he's he's getting better in practice, and you know, hope he's earning more minutes soon. Um, you know, if he if he's watching, you know, or if he happens to watch, man, you know, seek out the film, seek out the coaching staff. You know, go 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 to them. Don't wait to have them come to you, so that you can learn, get better, and get on that floor. Because I think his energy. Is is powerful, man. And, and let Ed Spriggs whisper a couple things in your ear. <laughs> um, Markham, this is for you. Have you seen a manager on a bench um, contribute the way that you contributed? Because some of your <laughs> stories are legendary, Markham. Um, I mean, you sat at the front of the bench, right? Like. Um, I've heard stories of you terrorizing um, other players. <laughs> I've, seen, I've heard stories. Um, because, I, I mean, church, well, I watch the bench as much as I watch the game. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's something we established as, as a program. Like, you're on the bench, and especially playing for Big John, because if, if he saw you in the game, that you know, you get your number called that way. Exactly. exactly. So I'd be jumping up for no reason. I mean, I, I don't know how many times I ran to the score table and he didn't call my name. Um, so but back to you, Mark. Have you seen anyone with your level of intensity that's wearing a suit? Uh 
I'm, I'm gonna. If you want to speak, and Mark, <laughs> even more so, if you want to speak to some of those stories I mentioned. Please, please. It's all yours. <laughs> no, Did you ever receive a technical marker? <laughs> I did not, but I came close. Uh, Big East tournament. Uh, ironic is me to bring that up because Big East tournament, my senior year, we were playing Seton Hall. And maybe it was my junior year. I'm almost sure it was my senior year. And the game was being called horribly both ways. Mm -hmm. And they made a horrible foul call against us. And I had, I used to keep a clipboard uh, where I charted uh, dives, uh, dives, rebounds, uh, points if anyone made it. I, I probably have the old sheet I could check it out but my clipboard that I was holding uh, I threw it I just in like I wasn't thinking I threw it and, and and coach was almost near half court so he didn't see but I threw it slammed it on the floor and the papers went everywhere and ironically John the third was uh sitting behind us and he grabbed him and he grabbed him while Miss Finley saw, so she, she looked at me like, like, dude, like, what's wrong with you? And John, like, grabbed the papers, brought them to me and was like, hey, man, like, calm down. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and I, and I don't, I don't know that you would want someone as intense as you. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I prefer, I prefer intensity all up and down the bit. Uh, <laughs> Church well. Do you yes, have sir. any Markham stories that you would like to share? <laughs> he's, he's, quick. he's quick to elbow me all the time, dog. Quick. So I have someone that was there at the same time. If, please feel free. The less flattering, the better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that there's several, but I think there's only one that uh, will come out today. And, you know, <clears throat> as players, we would always get up to the, to the rooms first. Managers had to stay back and, you know, do uh, uh, administrative stuff. And so, I mean, many a time, man, I'd just be sitting on the couch, you know, finishing up my food or watching TV. And Markham would come in, literally come in, maybe close the front door, maybe not. <clears throat> open up the refrigerator, look for something. Open up three or four cabinets. And then walk upstairs. Meanwhile, all the shit is still open. What? And I'm just looking like, what the hell? Like, he ain't gonna close it. <laughs> it's the craziest I've ever seen, man. Like, like, like he has some stuff still on his mind. Like, coach had him down at the gym doing something. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I don't, I don't, I, 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 I thought they was going somewhere else. I, I don't, I honestly don't remember that. <laughs> I would leave cabinets open. You man, you leave cabinets open, the refrigerator open, sometimes the front door just wide open. Just walk in, walk right over the step. I don't remember that at all. I thought I why, thought why, why would to, you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were about to talk about the time my uh my roommate Vladimir. No, I, uh, see, I, 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 I wasn't even gonna bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, so you know, you know, we, we all had departments, right? So it was for the apartment. It was two, two to a bedroom. You had the small bedroom, you had the big bedroom. So seniors, you know, obviously they got the big bedroom and all that. So our freshman year, Vladimir Vosonics, who was from Yugoslavia, uh, was a freshman. Hello, Vladimir. Yep. And we all lived together. You know, I, I think things started off okay, but somewhere along the line, <laughs> Markham and Vladimir did not, they just did not get along, man. I came in the house one day, man, Markham had put up a curtain, a, literally a black, black sheet, a sheet in the middle of the room that just <laughs> cut that thing off, man. <laughs> I, I don't think Vladimir could barely get to his closet. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, no, no, no. What happened was. What happened? <laughs> I would I would be studying and this clown would turn the lights off. Like, somebody, he's going to bed. 
So I hung a black sheet up with the light on my side and also put a line of tape down at the bottom and told him not to come on my half of the room or it was gonna be a problem. <laughs> so, so, so fellas, that's what happened. So fellas, <laughs> we're, 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 we're over an hour now and we always thank our guests mm -hmm. for uh, sharing your Sundays. Um, Cause obviously we all kind of get- Well, busy. Jane, 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 hold on. Cause I know we're about to wrap up, but hold on. Okay. Cause yeah. mo mo people are, uh, and I, I, I tell people this all the time, but like, people want to love, they love to go to a game and and see the finished product. They want to, it's, it's much more interesting to me to go to practice and see how people get to that place. Mm. Um, so I would ask Church what his best practice was and worst practice, or he has a story about practice uh, that he wants to share. Worst practice is easy. <clears throat> I think that was uh, junior year, Christmas, the practice before Christmas break. Ooh, and, always, uh, always one of those. Always. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I think we went for five and a half hours that morning. And at the end of it, coach, <laughs> after we ran, after we practiced for five and a half hours, then ran, like I said, Coach said, Merry Christmas, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's, it's funny how you can laugh about this shit there. And then um, <clears throat> freshman, freshman year, Mark, I mean, you, you, you may remember this, but we had, we had not been playing as well. And I think it's because of us being freshmen, you know, maybe the nerves, whatever. Because, you know, that whole sophomore class pretty much was gone. And um, and so we were thrust into starting positions, man. And although I probably would have took somebody's anyway, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> well, Biggie's rookie on Biggie's rookie team. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now one day coaches came out and said, "Pick teams," and he had Lonzo and Kimbe pick teams, man. And we just he said, "Go play," and we just played. It was like summertime, man. We was balling, just wow. having fun. He said, y'all have fun. We were just having fun, man. We're calling them plays, whatever, pick and roll. There was no setup? Right. It wasn't a nothing. setup? Nope. It wasn't, it wasn't no Ogie Dope and nothing. We wouldn't play, man. And then that's, that was Saturday. And that Sunday, we played UConn on CBS and uh, beat them. And um, we just played free, man. It was, wow. it, that was, that was probably one of the best practices because we just played. It was, it was almost like, we got back to why we loved the game, to why we was there to begin with. What what was what was and you know I, I want to piggyback on that because Markham never asked me any of these questions. Right? Never. And he just that's, just that's not true. We I we asked you that on the twenty two show. I'm talking, about, I'm, I'm talking about online. I, you didn't ask me a question on the twenty two show. You did not ask me one question. But that's not the handle there. I often found I, we never had that situation, and if we did, I just don't remember. But I often found uh, we had two, three game losing streaks during my, my four years, obviously different years. I often found when we had those losing streaks, we always had the best practices because believe it or not, coach was more, he was softer. Mm. He was more, um, to that point, he let you guys pick teams. Um, I just felt he took, you know, he, he, I remember him saying things like, if we have to fight our way to the national championship, let's do that. Like it was, it was, that was always interesting to me. So I kind of, when you, when you talked about that, it made me think of that. Um, I, I, I would definitely agree with that because without a doubt, I would say the year he was the toughest out of my career was 89 when we had a squad that should have won the national championship. And that, that the Christmas practice that year, uh church you said you at the end of practice you got uh merry christmas my motherfuckers our guys would have loved to have had that because what we got was i don't give a fuck about santa claus i don't know who y'all think i am <laughs> that's what we got in 89 i, I remember that forever 
Oh, I don't on, know. On, on, that, on, on that note, on that note, I will add: we, we were having a Christmas. <laughs> we was having a Christmas practice. It's my senior year, and I'm by that time I'm used to every trick in the book. Mm. And he kept giving us breaks, water break, Gatorade break. Kept, and I'm saying to I remember vividly: Wingate, Reggie. Michael Graham, because when he got the white around his mouth, because he wearing us out, I said to them, don't take the breaks. <laughs> it's a setup, right? <laughs> After you have one, one, one break, you don't need another one in 15, 20 minutes. It's a setup. Yeah. So we had one of those marathon joints, but guys kept taking a water break, kept taking a water break. And, and not only are we going to be in there, you're full. <laughs> so you're in the full joint. So that that yeah, I mean that those Christmas practices were the worst. Were the oh, worst. Yeah. oh yeah. All right. Yeah. With that, Mark, I mean, you want to take us home, fam? Church, appreciate you, man. Appreciate. Uh, you. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Yes, I will give. Uh, I got two quotes for you. Uh, the first one uh, is an Ashanti proverb. If you are on a road to nowhere, find another road. Uh, and the second one is from one of my favorite authors. Langston Hughes is my favorite, so he can't be number one, but he's very close. Uh, Mr. James Baldwin, who said, you cannot fix what you will not face. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you very much. Rob Churchwell for that's, the show. That's news, news. Hey, look, that's that's <laughs> Mr. Churchwell to you, sir. <laughs> All right, fellas. All right, fellas. All right, you do, just keep us in, you know, use us as, as you see fit. Yes, indeed. Uh, but we're 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 in this together, fam. Yes, in yes indeed. Yes indeed. Two two. All right, baby. Thank All you right, y'all. Take care. All right.